Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Sunday, November 14th, 2021. The Globex started higher in both the S&P and the NASDAQ, actually also in the Dow and the Russell. So across the board, the markets are continuing to move higher. In the S&P, it did move above where I was labeling a wave pattern for the downside. And I was looking for confirmation of a five wave pattern down, only got down to three. And it the fourth wave, which would have been in progress off of Thursday's lows, uh, exceeded the low of wave one. And that negated the pattern. That has not occurred yet in the NASDAQ, but I've gone ahead and changed the pattern to reflect uh, what I believe is going on, at least in the uh, S&P, and more than likely will occur here in the NASDAQ. Now that level to watch is 16,256. A break above 16,256, and we've gotten close. So far in Globex, we've gotten as high as 16,241. So we're not that far off of negating that count. So I've gone ahead and done it for, me, for us in terms of I, I've labeled what I was putting in as the high at 16,448 as the high of the minor five, the intermediate five, and the primary five. I've now raised the third as the wave five within that extended. And so an extended within wave three rather than on its own in a fifth wave. So the third is here, the minor four is here. That puts us in a minor fifth wave. Now, again, what I want to make clear is that the count itself is not a process of who is right or wrong. It's a process of interpreting the order flow and the price movement and how that translates into discernible chart patterns. With the markets themselves being fluid and ongoing, it becomes imperative that me as the analyst do, does the same thing. I do, I do not work with fundamentals to decide direction or how high or how low the markets are gonna go. I use Elliott Wave and Fibonacci sequences that over time have developed definitive structural patterns and rhythms. So this is what gives me the ability to use Fibonacci relationships between the waves that have commonality with regards to resistance and support areas. So with the break in the S&P of that resistance and support areas, the market has put a different count up for observation and trading. I've taken it and put it into the NASDAQ because the two markets are so closely related in terms of counts. So if this indeed is a minor fourth wave, we are in a fifth wave advance. What should that fifth wave advance begin to look like? Five waves up, again, of minute degree. Let me drop this down to the 30 minute chart and we'll take a look inside. So minor wave five, we get five waves of minute degree. Here's minute one, minute two, that third wave begins to subdivide in and of itself. So we have one, two. And then I believe that we have part of one, two, three, four, five of the third of this little wave. And then we have a four and a five, which will be the third of this wave, I believe. Let's say one, one, two, three, four, five, three of this and then a four and a five for three of this, and then a four and a five to complete the sequence. Ooh. So it's a series of three, fourth, and fifth waves, fourth wave declines, fifth wave advances. That's what we got left before we finished the whole sequence of a nine or fifth wave. So that kind of tells me that we're gonna get up into this area, probably just to complete this smaller internal three, and then a four and a five, and that five wave is likely going to start taking us up towards this area to complete. Okay, so tomorrow I would be looking for higher prices. We have that resistance at 256. It's just the low of wave one. It doesn't mean that it's going to hold for anything. 
it could go and equal it and still drop, but it's not going, it's going to be too big in relationship to what's already taken place. But stranger things have happened. So we have that resistance to 256 to 276. Above 256 negates the count as we had it and enforces the count as it is right now. Then we have resistance at 308, then 336, 355, and then 380. It is that 380 area that I think this third wave will complete, set up the stage for a fourth wave, and then we still have a fifth wave to move higher. Once this third and fourth are in, I'll rerun the extensions to run to include the move from wave two up to wave three and down to four to give us more definition as to where this five could end up. Right now, we're looking for 529, 6608. If I were to take it back out to the hourly chart, one other area that I can conclude is that being that on a Fibonacci basis, the fifth wave would have relationship Fibonacci wise with the third wave. If that's the case, this minor fifth wave has potential to reach the most common relationship, which is wave five will be equal to 62% of wave three. And that sits at 17,050, basically. We also have lesser common relationships, and that being point, that 38.2%, Wave five would equal 38.2% of wave three at 16,608. It would equal 50% at 16,828. Both, all three are candidates to complete the whole cycle. Okay, so for tomorrow, I do expect higher levels. I do expect that we will likely get back above 16,300 up here towards 16,380 to complete the thirds. Then we still have series of fourth and then a fifth. So that's my outlook for tomorrow. And likely the squeeze is gonna continue. I do feel most of this is a short squeeze due to the options. We do have another weekly option expiration, which will be on Friday. So I'll be looking into, into the internals and how the options are trading in the big tech stocks that I mentioned that remain in play. Our next update will be tomorrow, November the 15th.